I play Rosalyn. Rosalyn is a total feminist. She is just basically rejecting all of the um, gender restrictions that are put on her at that time. Um, she's a real forward thinker. She is um, dedicated and, 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 and really smart and intelligent and um, really just, you know, she wants to travel. She wants a career. Um, she wants passion and adventure. And um, I think she really um, defies the patriarchal world around her by um, refusing uh, an arranged marriage. She um, just continues to say what she wants and do what she wants and fight for what she believes in. Isabella Merced is um, the perfect Juliet. I was so excited um, that she was at, that she was coming on to, to play Juliet. I think she is brilliant. I think she has, you know, she's so um, good at the comedy, but she's really, really sweet and earnest and and is like a real like representation of 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 someone that is really, really kind. And I loved the scenes that I got to do with her. I think she is just a really, really great actor. and um, she's, I mean, aside from her being brilliant in the role, I think she's just an amazing person. and um, I had a lot of fun with her, just like hanging out and exploring Italy. It was really a lot of fun. Kyle was just making me laugh like too much. It was actually like really, really, really bad. I don't know if he ever mentioned this in his interview, but there was one moment where we were like, we were kissing and I started laughing while our faces were like touching and I just like, I couldn't hold it in. I just like basically just exploded. It was just like, I, he made me laugh so much and he is so good in this role. And he, he just is a, he's just the perfect balance of everything you would want Romeo to be and more. And this new modernized version of Romeo, I think is, I think he does like a really, really amazing job. Karen Maine is our director, and I think that she just, from the moment I met her, she just really understood what this movie could be and what it should be, and had a really, she had a really deep understanding for Rosalind and and Rosalind's desires and her goals in the movie and um, I think that Karen was just such an incredible director for this movie and so perfect and um, she really just understands like comedy but also like subtle comedy too which I think is is even better when you can when when you can really showcase that in a film. I think it's really brilliant. Um, she just allowed for the writing to 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 come to life in this really awesome way, and um, I just loved working with her. I loved collaborating with her. In this story, uh, Romeo and Juliet fall in love at first sight at that ball, where Romeo actually went disguised uh, as a Capulet and dressed up in their colors and went there to go see Rosalind because they had planned to do so initially. Uh, and that's where he accidentally runs into Ro uh, Juliet, literally runs into her, like they bump into each other and suddenly it's eyes meet, sparks fly, and then you know the rest of the story. But uh, it's interesting to see it from Rosalind's perspective. I play Juliet in the movie, and I think Juliet is a tender, kind spirit uh, who loves animals, and you don't only get to see most of her personality in the original Romeo and Juliet storylines because we're so focused on the love story that we're not focused on who she is as a person necessarily. Uh, all we know is that she loves this man and that she would do anything for him, but what about her interests? And that's what I love about this movie is that it fleshes her out as a character and you see her, she has a little pet bunny and and she enjoys you know, astrology and astronomy and, and she is a woman who knows what she wants at the end of the day.
Rosalind is intent on getting Juliet to move on from Romeo and distracting her, turning her head, because she really wants Romeo back. And she thinks, if I can get this girl to move on and out of the picture, then he will want to be with me. And so she does so by telling Juliet these made-up stories about how he's done this to every girl. And all the girls know Romeo is a player, and, um, and Juliet believes her. In turn, they uh, actually develop a friendship. Uh, and I don't think Rosalind intended to do so. She just had her own agenda. But uh, these women end up actually respecting each other and listening to each other's dreams and goals. And it's a really, it's a really sweet thing to see. And it makes it even more heartbreaking when you find out Rosalind did lie to her friend and use her. It was such a pleasure working with her because she trusted us to do what we wanted with our characters, um, but also she was very loyal to the story. So open to ideas, um, but also had a, a good head on her shoulders and was able to steer the ship with good control and um, judgment. Uh, she not only hired mostly an Italian crew, which I think is amazing considering we were filming in Italy, but um, she chose the most amazing locations. And I think people underestimate like what a director has to deal with and go through when we're filming a movie. It's, it's very hard, but I look to her and, and I admire her. It follows Rosalind, who is the... Uh in the original Shakespeare story, it's who Romeo falls in love with just before he falls in love with Juliet. Then you go in and follow the Romeo and Juliet story. In our version, you follow Rosalind. This is the first time we get to kind of look at how ridiculous everyone's behaving. Um, have some grounded, far more realistic characters kind of walk through that same story. Uh, and you just get to see uh, the insanity from a different angle, which I think is a blast. I played Romeo, um, who is, you know, Romeo, um, a, an absolutely ridiculous human, um, dim-witted. I would say he thinks with his heart, but he doesn't think at all. And I wouldn't, he just kind of, he's like a puppy dog, just kind of falls on his face and gets up with a smile and does his best, <laughs> but doesn't usually go well for him. Um, clueless, I think, could be pretty spot on for him. Romeo comes to Rosalind and professes his love to her and she is unable to say it back and what that tells him is that he uh, was wrong. This isn't the one for him. This isn't uh, what he thought it was. Um, and I, th I think he's, you know, purely an emotional individual. So there's no thought, there's no understanding. Oh, maybe she's not ready. Oh, maybe we need to take more time. Maybe I need to really show her I'm committed. It's like, oh, it's not an immediate yes. Well, then <laughs> my destiny lies elsewhere. <laughs> and so he's utterly crushed and uh, immediately, I think, starts moving on. She asks him, oh, well, like, let's meet at the dance. And, you know, because we're still a thing right and he's like i don't know um but he holds out hope to to meet her at the masquerade and uh when she ends up not showing up to the masquerade um gosh darn it sean and your dashing good looks uh he um he runs into juliet and then fate begins yeah you're gonna have a have, have a great time it's it's a film packed with legendary performers giving absolutely hilarious and heartfelt performances. Um, it's such a unique film. It's a, such a unique take on love and romance and a story that you, you think you know. Um, and I, I, it's just delightful, top to bottom. Imagine that the, the most star-crossed lover couple in history is actually Romeo and Rosalind. That sounds weird already, and, and that's where the movie starts, is that all these things that you know Romeo says, and, and the climbing of ivy branches to balconies, and the wishing on moons and nights and things, is happening to someone you, you've never, I think, gets one mention in the play as a sort of back character. And we've just built, well, Michael and Scott have written this whole world based around Rosalind, who is really the first Juliet, the original Juliet. And, um, 
and by by the nature of the time and 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 outside circumstances I won't give away their partnership their their relationship is put into danger and in that process Romeo meets Juliet we spend the rest of the movie trying to split them up with Rosalind and Dario I think there's a really great to and fro about um, there's this wonderful love-hate relationship situation there where there's sort of two passing ships actually that if they paid attention were probably sailing in quite a similar route. And, um, and for whatever reasons you'll find out, they can't quite see past their own things to get to that. And, um, and so they're like opposing natures and, and, uh, and do they want to one-up each other? Do they want to teach the other person a thing? Do they kind of actually secretly quite like how that feels? And, and I think um, Dario really enjoys playing with her and she's quite constantly flustered and sort of having to think on her feet. And, and, and in that process is quite rude. And I think Dario doesn't take kindly to that. Rosalind, our titular character, is played by Caitlin Deaver. And uh, what's not to love about how she plays it? She's literally in every scene. Um, there's something really fun about Rosalind. I mean, there's so many things that are great about Rosalind, but there's something really funny about watching characters that are sort of flustered and jilted and a bit scorned. And, uh, and it really suits Caitlin, and not because Caitlin is remotely flustered ever. It's the opposite of that. But I think Rosalind has to be quite quick on her feet, and Caitlin is incredibly quick off the cuff. Like she just like she she is just as rapid as Rosalind is required to be for her to get through the situation she goes through, so you kind of are just watching the perfect person play the perfect character because she's so quick and funny and endearing and uh, she's yeah oozes charisma and charm and um, and can also you know be very silly and slapsticky whilst again on the other side being graceful and elegant so she's got the whole thing. It's warm-hearted and funny and soulful and silly and complex and simple at the same time and, um, and just full of really brilliant people telling a very funny take on, on one of the greatest stories ever written um, in a time period that I think is made for comedy. I think the medieval times are starting to take the mickey out of very easily and we've done it very well before and I think it's about time we did it again it's been a hot minute so so yeah it's hopefully people enjoy it for what it is which is a very sweet and silly and fun movie um, that kind of takes you away from other things without being too serious which is really nice. The relationship between Rosalind and Juliet develops sort of to Rosalind's surprise as she's sort of scheming to keep her apart from Romeo. And what she realizes is that Juliet isn't just this kind of naive, innocent, young, you know, unexperienced child that she thinks she is. She's actually, I mean, she is younger than her, but she has a mind, she's very thoughtful, she's intelligent. And with a little bit of guidance from, from Rosalind, Juliet kind of blossoms into this very self-possessed, strong character. Um, and I think Juliet is also very much taken by Rosalind's uh, personality and the way she kind of, you know, bucks tradition, as I've said, and the way she acts toward her father, um, the way she sort of, you know, is outspoken and, and goes after what she wants. So Rosalind has this very positive influence on Juliet despite these, you know, her pretenses or her motivation for why she's spending time with her. The interesting thing about Rosalind and Dario is I think they both prejudge each other in this way um, that many of us do. She thinks she has him pegged as this sort of young man who's just returned from the war. He's a soldier boy, as she calls him. She thinks he's very macho. Um, and just completely not her type, like the opposite of Romeo, who's very romantic and poetic and sort of sweeps you off your feet. Uh, Dario's much more pragmatic and a realist, and he doesn't really let Rosalind get away with things. He kind of challenges her, and at first she really dislikes that um, because it's annoying. Uh, but they go on a date. Um, it 
on his ship and they get rained out and so she's in her you know elegant masquerade ball dress and she looks like a drowned rat um and she tries to get there and she's you know late and Romeo's gone but so she associates Dario with like ruining her relationship essentially um because after that you know Romeo has met Juliet at the ball and if she had gotten there that may not have happened so she really hates Dario. Rosalind's played by Caitlin Deaver. Um, Caitlin is a very versatile acting kind of powerhouse. Um, and what she brought to the character of Rosalind was a real authenticity. And she carries these comedic moments incredibly well. Her comedic timing is sort of pitch perfect. Uh, so those moments are hilarious, but then she gives equal weight and consideration to the more, I guess, sincere moments of the film. Um, so she really walks that balance incredibly well. Romeo's played by Kyle Allen, um, and I was really blown away by meeting Kyle for the first time. Uh, he hadn't done a lot of comedic roles, uh, but you wouldn't know that from watching him in this film. Uh, Romeo, Romeo is a very kind of fine line. Uh, he's meant to be, his character's meant to be funny, but to Romeo, there's nothing funny or ironic about who he is. Um, he's very earnest and sincere and, you know, very much a, a love boy, a uh, lovesick boy. Uh, and I think... Kyle really walks this fine line with him where he deeply believes that about himself and it allows the audience just much more real estate to laugh at him uh, which is great and I think I actually think Romeo is one of the funnier characters in the whole film. When our movie begins Romeo is dating Rosalind and she is a Capulet he is a Montague so this is a secret relationship. And Romeo professes his love, and Rosalind kind of fumbles this moment and doesn't say it back. And she's sort of kicking herself, and she says, listen, let's meet up at this Capulet ball. We'll, we'll wear masks. No one will know you're there because you're a Montague. And uh, we'll make up for it and have a special night. And Rosalind never shows up to the party for reasons uh, we'll show. And Romeo arrives and instead meets Juliet. And when Rosalind finds out about this relationship, she will do literally anything to get her boyfriend back. Telling the story from Rosalind's perspective uh, allowed us to make this a comedy rather than a tragedy like the original Romeo and Juliet. Uh, but the other thing it allowed us to do was explore someone else's point of view who was there, who, was exper who experienced these things. Because Rosalind is mentioned in the original play, but never seen on stage. And she is the reason Romeo goes to the Capulet Ball. And Romeo gets there and, and meets Juliet and falls madly in love. And yet, Shakespeare never tells us, what did Rosalind think of Romeo and Juliet? When you see Rosalind, it will hopefully feel like a version of Romeo and Juliet you've never seen before because those beloved characters are not as much in the foreground. It's Rosalind's story. And her story is a different kind of love story and a funnier one. And maybe by the end, we're all wondering, all these years have we been telling the wrong love story? The story of Rosalind um, really begins um, when after Ro Rosalind kind of uh, can't say I love you back to Romeo, um, and we've seen Romeo kind of woo her the way that we've imagined him woo Juliet in all of our uh, thoughts. Um, Rosalind has, doesn't hear from Romeo for a while and follows him into the into the forest um, where uh, there's a lot of sneaking around because Rosalind is Juliet's cousin, so she is um, a Capulet, and the Capulets and the Montagues and all that stuff they can't talk, so. Um, uh, Rosalind finds herself kind of under a balcony and she witnesses the famous balcony scene between Romeo and Juliet, which we all kind of know and recognize. But for her, it's this betrayal because we just saw him do this with her. And um, she realizes soon after that who this woman is. 
Um, and it's her cousin who she hasn't seen in quite a long time because she was off at boarding school and she came back and she has blossomed and it's really Rosalind's worst nightmare. Uh, and so the second act is really Rosalind trying to figure out how she's going to win Romeo back. Um, and her plan involves kind of keeping Juliet as far away from her ex as possible. Caitlin Deaver, um, we were fortunate enough to have uh, play Rosalind. She's um, someone we've known for a very long time. Uh, we made a movie called The Spectacular Now that she was in, um, and she also um, came really close to starring in a couple other things that we had written um, by giving the most incredible auditions, um, and we knew she was just a rising star that um, was going to take over the world someday. Um, and the fact that she wanted to do Rosalind um, really, um, we could not have been more excited. Um, and uh, and she's perfect for it. I mean, she really is just, if Diane Keaton and Meryl Streep had a baby, um, she can do comedy, she can do drama, she has gravitas, she's just delightful. Um, and um, in real life, she's a wonderful person. So it really is a dream come true for us. I think this is the Romeo and Juliet story that, um, that uh, you've never seen before. Um, it's always fun to take something that you know a little bit about or um, maybe you know nothing about it uh, and it will take your expectations and kind of play with them and, and really um, just have a good time. I think if you're a fan of um, coming of age movies, if you're a fan of uh, romantic comedies, um, there's something in here for, for, for you guys. Um, and uh, it's just a joy to watch these actors do their thing. Um, and we're really excited to, to get it out into the world.